Hey guys, this is Mike the Automotive Junkie here and I am out in Sea Isle City. It is uh, spring break. It's a little cold here, but we're still enjoying the views of the beach. And I think it's gonna hit 60s uh, later this afternoon and tomorrow, so it should still be nice. But I'm doing something different, a little different this time. Uh, we're actually looking at an EV, so we're going to go for a ride in a Tesla. This will be the first time uh, I've actually gone for a ride in one. And uh, my buddy Mark down here uh, said, you gotta take it for a ride. He has a full self-drive in the vehicle, so we're going to test that out as we cruise around uh, Sea Isle City here. And uh, you guys will get to see that and uh, learn a little bit more about Tesla life. Let's go do it. Well, let's right, say so we're we here. We're located. Here's our location. Smart summon. So we're in a tight spot here. You know, it's kind of hard to get in the doors. It's not going to come right to us, but, you know, we'll see how far it comes out. Nice. So we pull it out, it's not going to pull around right, yeah. and get us, you know. But if you were in a mall, it would probably come It would closer. probably come closer, yeah. Nice, well, all right, cool. got out of a tight spot. Yeah. Without hitting your doors. That's true. All the cold mirrors coming out. All right, so we're inside the Tesla, and it's just a giant screen. That's pretty much it. Yeah. There's really not much else to it. There's no speedometer over here. So where does the speed show on here? Does this show so you like in the gauge, corner? The speed will be up here. Okay. We'll have to be in drive to see that. Nice. So let's go where it's cool. Yeah. So there should be service there. That'll be our first destination. Gotta start there to come in and get that. Sounds good. See the other side. So okay. once you put your foot on the brake, that activates the car. Now it's ready. Now it's alive. Okay. Right, right now it was dead until okay. foot yeah. on the brake. Now it's in park. So okay. You get your gear selector. You just do it from there. And then it's in drive, you can hear it activate. Now we get our display here. And this is showing all the parked cars, our surroundings. And then you're ready. No noises. Oh yeah, it kind of recognizes people that aren't there. It's these ghost people. people. It, it, it's seeing a guy in a black hoodie and a black pants the other day. I didn't even see him. He's walking across the room. Well, that's good when there actually are people there. But yeah. Yep. These are the people walking on the sidewalk. So this is like a rough construction zone. See now, if I pull yeah. this down, I'm activated now. Self drive into the drive, and this is a this is a rough road. It's set for 25 miles an hour. So we also so put there's the no signal pain, on too by it itself. It does everything. Yeah, it does signals. Wow. So this is construction. A lot of cones. Uh, you can see the camera. What it sees. Picks your lane, puts a blinker on. Wow. I'm, I'm doing nothing. I mean, puts that on the gas. And it creeps up. So now it knows, you know, you can, there's no turn on red. There's a no turn on red sign here. So we're allowed to turn. Uh, so it's going to decide whether or not what that car is doing. And it may or may not uh, turn before the light turns green. Interesting. A lot of people around, you got dogs. Okay, so let's can see the traffic signals and the other cars moving. People approaching us. But the light did turn green.
this blue line always shows you the path it's going to take. Gotcha. So it might be like, if it has a little swervy line, it might be thinking about going in that direction. How's it, like, as far as reaction goes, you know, like a car in front of you stops suddenly. It'll put it's on It's pretty good that it slams the brakes on. Like, it does. Yeah. The other day, I was uh, on a three lane highway doing 65 and I was going from the left lane into the center lane. And at that exact time, the, a car in the right lane decided it wanted to go in the center lane. So it started coming over. Uh, so as this car started coming over, it saw that that car was coming over and it pulled back. Wow. So it's always showing like sense and distance to the rails of the bridge. You can move this over too and get a full view. There's not a lot to see now because it's all the sounds, but. Mm -hmm. Say it told me to put pressure on here because I was like going loose. So I turned blue up top, mm -hmm. just gives you a little warning. You can see right now, automatically, we're doing 51 and a 45, so it's Got going it. a little over. Yeah, uh, most of the time, it does go slower though than faster. I guess too, it can calculate like traffic. It does all and that. It's supposed to keep up to speed. It'll keep up to speed with all the other cars. The like I've been in a 40 and cars are doing 65 and it says maintaining traffic flow. Got it, yeah, that makes sense. All right, so we're inside the Tesla and it's just a giant screen that's pretty much it yeah. there's really not much else to it there's no speedometer over here so where does the speed show on here does this show well, you like in the corner the speed will be up here okay i'd love to be in drive to see that nice so let's go where it's cool it should be in there. Should be service center. So that'll be our first destination. We'll kind of start there to come and get that. Sounds good. See outside. So okay. once you put your foot on the brake, that activates the car. Now it's ready. Now it's alive. Okay. Right, right now it was dead until. Okay. Foot yeah. On the brake. Now it's in park. So okay. You get your gear selector. You just do it from there. And then it's in drive. You can hear it activate. Now we get our display here, and this is showing all the parked cars, our surroundings, and then you're ready. No noises. Oh yeah, it kind of recognizes people that aren't there. It's just Ghost lucky. people. It, it's seen a guy in a black hoodie and a black pants the other day. I didn't even see him. He's walking across the room. Well, that's good when there actually are people there, but... Yeah. Yep, sees the people walking on the sidewalk. So this is like Straight a rough construction zone. See now, if I pull yeah. this down, I'm activated now. Self-drive. Into the drive, and this is a, this is a rough road. It's set for 25 miles an hour. Okay, so we also so put the no signal pain, on, too, by it itself. It does everything, yeah. It does signals. Wow. So this is construction, a lot of cones. Uh, you can see the camera. Let's see his. Picks your lane, puts a blinker on. Wow. And I'm, I'm doing nothing. My foot's not on the gas. And it creeps up. So now it knows, you know, you can, there's no turn on red. There's a no turn on red sign here. So we're allowed to turn. Uh, so it's going to decide whether or not what that car is doing. And it may or may not uh, turn before the light turns green. Interesting. A lot of people around, the dogs.
Okay, so as you can see the traffic signals and the other cars moving. People approaching. The light did turn green. And this blue line always shows you a path it's going to take. Gotcha. So it might be like if it has a little swervy line, you might be thinking about going in that direction. How's it like as far as reaction goes? You know, like a car in front of you stops suddenly. It'll put it's on. It's pretty brakes. good that it slams the brakes on. Like it does. Yeah. The other day, I was uh, on a three-lane highway doing 65, and I was going from the left lane into the center lane, and at that exact time. The, a car in the right lane decided it wanted to go in the center lane, so it started coming over. Uh, so as this car started coming over, it saw that that car was coming over and it pulled back. Wow. So it's always showing like sense and distance to the rails of the bridge. this over to and get a full view. There's not a lot to see now because it's all sounds, but... Mm -hmm. I say it told me to put pressure on here because I was like going loose. So it turned blue up top. Mm -hmm. Just gives you a little warning. I can see right now automatically we're doing 51 and a 45. So it's going it. a little over. Yeah. Uh, most of the time it does go slower though than faster. I guess too it can calculate like traffic. It does a lot. And it's it, supposed to keep up to speed. It'll keep up to speed with all the other cars. The like I've been in a 40 and cars are doing 65 and it says maintaining traffic flow. Got it. Yeah. That makes sense. So we're back on self-driving, coming into exit 17. So automatically puts the blinkers on, comes down, takes this tight hairpin turn. It's pretty impressive because I would think that it would slow down a lot more for the turn, but it <laughs> it maintains a pretty yeah. good. Uh, I mean, it calculates it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's why. That's why I said it's pretty impressive. You know, yeah. What they've done. Yeah, it puts a blink on it at a good distance. You know, everything's real natural. It's got eight cameras looking around, so it sees you know. Things that you don't say, like we have two eyes, but you know, we're always looking in one direction. Right. Now, eventually, this supercharger is not on the map right now, but if I chose this supercharger, it would automatically direct us to here. I wouldn't have to say why, why I'd say the supercharger. And it would precondition the car, it would warm up the battery, start getting the coolant flowing. And it would, you know, get the battery ready for charging. The parking lot's are unmapped, so it, it's all over the place in there. There's no real map to a uh, parking lot it's using the Google. But you can see it's getting us pretty close to the front door. It tries to get to the front door, and then it'll end. So it says end. Right, and then you so kind of take over again but the it, park. Like I said, next the next revision, it's going to have the. Uh, Auto park 
it'll be parking so see 12 chargers we got here 12 super chargers should be ready by memorial day yeah So these are the superchargers. So talk a little bit about like how long it takes to charge. And I know you were mentioning when we were talking yesterday a little bit about like, you know, they kind of recommend you only charge up to 80%. But if you're doing a trip, you can charge to 100. But generally you want to charge from, uh, get it down to around 20%. And then 20% uh, to 80% uh, will take you about 20 minutes to a half an hour. I don't know, there's different watches with some of these different superchargers. Um, but yeah, it's pretty quick. Uh, so by the time you go on Wawa, get a coffee and sandwich, maybe go to the bathroom, you come out, pretty much you're done. Pretty much so, ready to go. So across, across the way, you're getting gasoline, yeah, it's five minutes. But if you still go on Wawa, it's still taking the same amount of time True. Uh, to do that. You know, if you're, yeah. on, if you're on a road trip, I mean, for every day driving, sure, it's going to take a little more time, but then you do the at-home charging, generally, if you're at home. Yeah, and you're, this gets, what, 300 and... 10, 310, 3, yeah. 310 right now range. Like 75. I got 233, so and you got to kind of do the math. So right daily right. driving, if you drive 15 miles, you know, round trip to work. Yeah, I could get away with charging once a week. Yeah, once a week. Yeah, because I figure even with the gas car, like I probably fill up once a week anyway, right. just back and forth to work. Yeah. So you'd only be charging once a week. Yeah, it's. A, I, I, don't, I don't think it's much of a lifestyle change, to be honest with you. And actually, I get home, I plug it in, uh, just like your phone, and I wake up every day 80%. So, like, I don't let, I don't just do it once a week. I don't wait till, like, Thursday and say, okay, I'm down to 30%, and I'm still good for the week. But now if I say, oh, I got to run down the shore, well, I'm out. Like, now I'm, I'm too low. So, right. you're better off starting out with a fresh charge every day and, uh, you know, have a full tank. All right, so, now we'll do the trip to our CEO. And you said most of the stuff you can program right from the app. Right, you can everything's on the app that you can do on here. So you got your car, you got all your controls, you can do your climate, heated seats, set your temperatures. So you could do all that even before you, you get in the car. To frost the car in the morning, you can get it ready for the uh, charging on your way. You got your location, you got your summon, and your charge stats. But right now we're going to do a, uh, the Google Maps, and you can plan a trip in your in your Google Maps too. And, uh, and then select the uh, the drive. So let me set up that real quick, and then we'll uh, we'll do that. So you're adding a couple different stops yeah, along little, the way, so we have a different course to take. Drive. And we're going to try navigating a couple roads that we know around here are kind of tight, like going to the yacht club. It's a little tricky to get back there. All right, so we got that to the yacht club, go to the Acme, go down to the Sunset Pier area, come back to the. Uh, Rockus, hit the point for Sunday fun day, come back, hit Pirate Gulf, a quick round of golf, come back to Ocean Drive, and that'll be a 28 minute uh, tour. So now I got the whole, and I could do all that in here, but type it in here. It's, it's a lot more. On your phone. So here, yeah. it has an automatic test lap. Okay. So I hit. It just sends it right, right there, and it's ready to go. And we got that whole route ready to go. Just showing that. Let's see if it does the, uh, the trip. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if it's just going to go to Ocean Drive or do the whole six stops I have in here. It should do the whole six stops. Let me try it. This is, this is new to me. That's the first time I did this. Self-driving is engaged. So tell, tell us a little bit too about like maintenance and stuff like that. So obviously, you know, general wear and tear on a car wiper blades, tires, that type of stuff, but is there any other real maintenance or like even just software updates? How fast is that type of stuff? Or? Yeah, software updates take about half an hour to do a full update and uh, it might be every every couple months for an update. It might be something just as simple as a blinker light changing. Uh, yeah, recently they just had the full self-driving update. That was the big update. Went from 11.9 to 12.3. And they're working on a 12.4 now. It's supposed to be released in two weeks. And, uh, you know, he said he has an update coming every two weeks for the next month with a lot of little tweaks. So it's a pretty quick update. It's pretty much just like updating an app on your phone. You know, just hit the update. You have to be in a Wi-Fi area. And uh, maintenance, you know, you got your wiper blades. It's just like any other car. If you live in California, you're never, probably never changing your wiper blades. But, uh, you know, you change them every five year or two years. And uh, you got your wiper fluid, washer fluid. Uh, if you open the trunk, that's the only thing you see is the uh, fill, fill cap for the uh, washer fluid. And then tires, they recommend changing the, rotating the tires every 6,500 miles because there's a lot of torque on your tires. Uh, so you change the front to the back and, and keep rotating them and make sure you have even tire wear. Your tires are, you know, you're gonna get like 25,000 miles out of the tires or so, something like that. You know, uh, it's a little more wear in a normal car because it is probably a thousand pounds heavier, and then uh, you're putting a lot of force on all four tires at the same time with that acceleration. Uh, brakes, you know, brake pads, you know, you might get 100,000 miles because you're always using the regenerative braking, so you're not really wearing out your brake pads too much. Uh, you may have to. Uh, do some lubrication of the pins or the calipers every year or every two years, depending on how salty your environment is. But basically, that's about it. There's not, there's not a lot of maintenance. It's amazing how minimal it is, too. So, that is going to take us just to that one stop. So, let me uh, get that yacht club in here. So we put in six stops from the uh, Google Maps on the phone, but it only picked up the last stop when it was sent. So we would be better off adding the stops here, putting it and right doing in doing everything right in here. Gotcha. So you could almost do that while you're charging them, right? Like oh yeah, you can plan your whole route so while you're charged, while you're sitting. You can sit there, charge, plan where you're heading, get it all programmed. So we got an ocean right there coming in. I see where that. See our city welcome center. Always good to see. I see these little poles. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. coming in. It realizes you know there's something there. We got something here. This is like a new turn on red from May 1st to October 1st. Not sure how it would uh, react to that sign. Then we got the ore house. All right, we got Mike's famous seafood. Everybody loves seafood. Yeah, I like seafood there. So we got to stop. It does a full stop. So it does a, a zero mile per hour stop. 
at every stop sign and then tend to creep forward, which I, this went pretty quick. And it really doesn't look at at stop signs. Yeah, so this road that we're gonna turn on is gonna have some speed bumps. We'll see how that navigates those and then tight. Uh, well, it may not be as bad now because who knows how many people are down here this early in the season, but but on a normal weekend, this this road can be very packed. See, I'll pick that line right up. Yeah, I mean you could go. It just takes hug, the curve. Hug the line. Yeah, right? it really holds the lines nice. So this is complicated. You've got cars coming both ways. You've got speed bumps, humps. Actually, it slowed down. They said that was a new. Uh, this uses a, uh, a neural network system, so we. Uh, it's like AI built into the system, so it is always learning. Going around the construction. The car and the speed bump. Well, that's it incredible. slowed down pretty good, actually. That, that's nice. Yeah. It must see the signs enough. Three weeks it. ago, it would have went over them at full speed. Jeez. Uh, now it's slowing down here, too. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. And there's the Yacht Club. Take you right to the front. So, uh, you can see it's turning right around. It likes to drop you right off at the front door. Yes. So we'll disengage and we'll go to uh, the next trip. Take a trip down to Townsend Inlet area. So to engage your full self-drive, you just, just pull down once, pull down. one tap. Yeah. Wow. It's quick. And disengage, you can either pull up one time, which will not put you into reverse. Don't be, don't be worried about that. I just push it up and uh, uh, control. Or you put your foot on the brake, it'll stop it. Now look how tight this is. Let's see. All right, we got this somebody jogging here. Big test here. And you got... And I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Handled it just fine. Took it slow and... Got itself around. I mean, that was that was incredible. You gotta admit. Yeah. Or if you jerk the steering wheel with more torque than it requires, that'll disengage it. See, it's telling me to put some pressure on there. So if you feel like it's going a little fast around a, a turn, and you wanna, you can always. You can st you can stop it at any time. Yeah. You know, as slow as this feels, this is posted as a 15 mile an hour right. road. Right, doing 22. Yeah, so you can set like parameters to say, you know, 10 to 15 miles over. Yeah, that's all in the, uh, the autopilot settings. Yeah, you can set that. Does it ever take a different route than you are like, ah, oh, I wouldn't have gone down that street. Like I, I would have probably gone a couple streets up. Recalculate a route, yeah. Sometimes it does something a little faster than what, you know, you're like, where's it going? But it usually figures itself out. See, it wanted to go. I stopped it. Yeah, to go. saw that car coming. So it wasn't gonna pull in front of this car. chose this way. I mean, sometimes I might go down, all the way down by the library, you know. I wanted to go. Yeah, saw the cars coming. Mm -hmm. Stop.
still went in between two cars yeah. too. Well, but it calculates enough, the speed, yeah. you know, like it wasn't that car wasn't come up at forty. Right. And it, it had it's enough. amazing that it figures it out. You know? It did okay. Because they're driving, they're testing these things right now in California and in like LA and stuff like that with some major five track, five lanes of traffic, and, mm -hmm. and it has to cut in front of some of those cars. So it's doing pretty good. So you came from a Mercedes AMG, <laughs> right, yeah, I had the Mercedes 400 some horsepower Mercedes V8, 55 with the uh, supercharged V8, 5.5 liter. So and, uh, and it's you like got a 470 yellow. horsepower, and uh, it felt great. I, mean, I had a lot of fun years with that, you know. Yeah. But now this is like instantaneous torque. Uh, it's a whole it's different just, it's world. Just no stop. Yeah. Kind of like a roller coaster, you know, it's zero to 80, but that's it, you know, five seconds. And if you felt like you're going a little slow, right now it's keeping a good traffic, it's going to keep you from getting a speeding ticket, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But right now I can, I can push down on the accelerator and override that. So if you want to really say, hey, you know what? Speed it up a little. <laughs> but now the problem is, it's going to want to hold that now because I think that's what I want to do. So, which it is adjusting now a little bit. Depends on your environment. But if you're on the highway, that'll, that'll keep that. But you can't override that. And it's still in self-drive. The main it's thing just... is, is you are in control. You know, you have to always realize that, you know, you kind of get complacent, you let the car do what it's doing, but, you know, if you need to make a maneuver with the steering wheel, that's, that's on you, you know, and uh, you can change the speed. So when you were looking at getting a Tesla like what was the yeah you know, like say like the three things that kind of made you question it whether or not you can make the change going from a gas car to, to this and then what were like the three things that really sold you on it yeah well you know you get used to the gas car you know you say well I can get gas anywhere you know every corner has you know two or three gas stations and they're just readily available because the infrastructure has been being built for 40 years, you know. So with the uh, electric power, you know, you guys say, well, where am I going to charge it? You know, we're going to just go to a supercharger every day. Uh, like mine is like three miles from my house. Uh, so it'd be an inconvenience to drive to that every time if I had to charge. So if you're in an apartment or something like that, uh, that, that could be a problem, you know. Uh, but I installed the home charger, so every day I go home, I got the uh, Tesla wall charger. It's 200. And uh, 20 uh, amp charger and it charges at 44 miles per hour so with that I got a fresh charge every day like just going to the shore it's a 70 mile round trip for me or not round trip one way trip so I can I can charge go home I'll be charged up in three four hours There's warnings whereas I, I was giving a little gas and it felt like it was getting too close mm -hmm. to that car. It keeps a good distance. Yeah, so the biggest thing, you know, going from a regular car like a Mercedes or something like that, you're used to all your instrumentation and dials. And, and you get in this at first and you're like, this has nothing, you know, we're, you know unless you're used to looking at a screen, then, uh, you know, you got to be able to find everything, just like when you first get a phone and you're not used to that. So, 
did a couple test drives. That actually took me like three test drives. And uh, I did rent one for a weekend. Uh, and really try it out. You know, pulling it in the garage and seeing how you like it. Backing it up with the cameras. And, uh, and the speed, you know, there's so much more torque and speed than the, uh, the actual V8 engine. So after doing that, I said, well, this, this is definitely what I'm interested in because it is sporty. It's not just a high tech car. Uh, it really had everything I was looking for. And they're great with the storage. You know, now you eliminate the engine, you got the frunk. So you get extra storage up there. And just everything's about it clean. So once you get used to it, you get used to the minimalistic thing. It's just a driving car, you know, so. I find that to be interesting. Dumpster, it's realized, solid, but flapping it, it, around. it wasn't a car. It kind of slowed down, wasn't sure what yeah. to do. Didn't know what it was at first. quiet but it is I mean it's a nice ride it's not bad no it's got you know it's got the sport suspension so it is a little bumpier than like say a Cadillac like the uh, Cadillac makes it a nice EQ, the EQ, EQ, yeah, the EQS called. or whatever yeah, something like that. that's a nice car uh, it's got the comfort of the Cadillac they kind of took the, the Volt Chevy uh, Volt I guess it is maybe the Cadillac Burger So like you notice, there's, there's not even a button for the glove box. You, you can't open the glove box. Well, everything is done from the screen. You can do it from voice too. There is a voice. Um, so basically, you hit your glove box and it opens that up. Manual closed. Get your mirrors, fold your mirrors, set your wipers. You can adjust your mirrors, adjust your steering. Get your pedals and steering. So <clears throat> chill mode is actually very chill. It's a good bike like, really. like when you drive it, you won't get that acceleration. Mm -hmm. Even if you push it down hard, it's gonna be chill. It's gonna be more it's gonna drive like a normal car. Yeah. The sport, you got your acceleration, which is you felt that. Mm -hmm. uh, steering mode you can put into comfort or sport. There is a big difference. It'll be more soft and comfort. Stopping mode mode, you have it on hold, that means it automatically it's gonna hold at a, at a stop sign. Uh, or you can have it kind of creep. You used to have like a, a full roll give it that feeling of a car wouldn't be so regenerative but more coast mm -hmm. um, charging right now I got that charging limit set at 100 normally you would want to keep that at 80 and you can set your uh, amperage at, the, uh, at your home or in the end I'm gonna show your last charges autopilot right now you got your <coughs> come standard with traffic aware cruise control 
Um, that's that's for highway only, mm -hmm. and that'll do uh, lane. You know, it'll change your lane. It's kind of like a speed change. If you put your blinker on, it'll go into the next lane, and it'll keep your speed and your distance to a car. Uh, you can upgrade to the uh, auto steer, and that'll exit off the highways. You get full exit. And right now, this is in the full self driving beta. I mean, it is still testing. Um, so you know, that's what we're in. And with the, you know, and then get the single pull stock. All this here, you can have a double pull. Driving modes are again, you can have chill where it's going to just keep a real good distance between cars and, and drive at normal speed and, and minimal lane changes. It's not going to be like trying to zigzag mm -hmm. in and out. Right now, we got it on assertive, which is not as assertive as a Jersey driver, believe yeah. it or not. It's, but it is, it is good. Uh, it'll, it'll change lanes to, to try to get speed. So if it's coming up on a car doing a 50 and a 65, it'll it'll change lanes to go around it. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty pretty good with that. You know? And you can set your lane change uh, notifications. Locks are basically your keys. You got your phone or your key card that they come with. Headlight selection, pretty self-explanatory with that. Your display. That's all this you have. A, if you have a screen clean mode, uh, you know, it's like cleaning your phone. If you got a rag and tried wiping this off, everything would be all over yeah, the place. Yeah. So you can hit Trigger screen mode, buttons. and now you can clean it with a nice microfiber rod, rag. You know, clean that. And then you can get out of your uh, screen clean. You can set different functions for your scroll wheel, such as heat, radio, uh, foam, you know, whatever you want to set that up as. Tracks all your trips, your navigation selection. This is your central mode. You can have this one where it'll have all eight cameras active in an unknown parking area. See if anybody approaches your car. And have your dash clean. So you can delete USB in the glove box. You can delete them. And you can actually put a one terabyte hard drive in here too. Cool. Service, you got your tire pressures, all the manuals are on online here. You can adjust your headlights, change your wheels. Here's the uh, tire reset when I have to uh, rotate, rotate the tires. You can have a car wash mode so that uh, deactivates all your cameras and, and wipers. Yeah, he's tripping off when you're going through the car wash. Software that's going to be telling you where your updates. If you have any updates, I'll tell you here. This is telling us on uh, version 12.3 of the uh, full self driving. And all this will be available in your phone app also. And uh, here we have our heater. This is our whole dash display. Um, everything you do is, is through the screen. So these vents, you can actually feel it. move that with your finger. You can see the direction of air mm -hmm. changing. Mm -hmm. So you got like an infinite control of where you, can, you want them to go. So it's not, it's actually more control than a knob or, right. or a slider. Uh, you <laughs> can really direct that I mean, you can see you can get it coming right at you or up towards your face. And uh, you got your heated steering wheel, you got your heated seats, front, you got your back. It shows our, our back seats right now, we don't have any on. You can put that on, heat that seat. You got three levels. I actually call them uh, bacon slices because <laughs> it's like a little bacon, but how hot you want it to be. Or you turn it off, and then you can turn yours. We, don't, we got we're in the back now, but we got the front, and that's on automatic right here. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that's your basic controls with the uh, climate, okay, your fan speed, your temperature. Right now it's on auto. You can go from heat to cold just by sliding that. Uh, just like if you're in the uh, a radio. Your 
while I'm here. And I know you're not that loud music in the but that's why I have it on mute. So that's it. So we're in park. We'll switch, switch seats. All right, so I'm sitting in the driver's seat and made a couple adjustments to adjust mirrors and stuff like that. So put me in as a guest. Right now so there's the guest multiple mode. people that you can program. set. Pretty easy to adjust the mirrors. This is showing a 0.2% consumed on our last trip, but our last trip we went from the golf place to here, so it's not showing right. our whole entire uh, route. Um, but you know, you're driving, you got percentages driving, how much used for your climate. We weren't heating it, so we didn't use a lot. You know, we didn't do any battery conditioning because we didn't charge. Uh, so there's not a lot of information that we need to see there. Well, in park, it shows you. Uh, different things that you had while it was parked, but we weren't parked. Consumption, showing you at a high point when we were doing some heavy driving, mm -hmm. we really used some uh, power. Uh, but like I said, the average range would be 241. And the harder you drive it, the way we were driving it, our range projected down, range goes yeah. down to like 219. But if you maintain one autopilot and a full self driving, you're gonna get closer to the range you want, because right. it's not, you know, going full torque or, or driving erratically, stuff like that. So that's your energy range there. So that's what we got there. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I'm uh, the one pedal driving takes a little bit to get used to uh, the regenerative braking and all that, but it drives nice. Like it, it's great, and the full self drive is pretty impressive shocked at how good it was able to navigate certain certain situations yeah it, so. it, does, it does as well as you would do you know I mean, in most yeah. cases and it makes the decision for you and it's using all you know google google maps so everything is uh, constantly updated by satellites you know yeah it's cool well thanks mark appreciate right. it yeah, sure, Let me drive it and try it out and experience uh, the, 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 the Tesla experience. Yeah. yeah, cool.